Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Under the Iron Flag. Uh, and this week of uh, We Just Want to Talk About One Piece, we will be covering the Logetown arc and just kind of the East Blue Saga as a whole. Uh, it is me, your Vice Captain Lucian Graves, uh, and also with us are, of course, uh, your Captain Iron Aggro and oh. your Navigator Saflam. Yep, I'm here too. Better intro, good job. Uh, so yeah, why don't we get started I on Logetown? I think I want to start with term Vice Captain before. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's distinctly Vice a Captain, one piece thing. First mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of want to hear Inagro's thoughts because I, I know you guys have said over and over again that Inagro likes world building and uh, kind of classifications and just anything to do with the world and these five chapters have just been like uh, an explosion of that yeah <laughs> for lack of a better <laughs> phrase so I want to hear his thoughts first about it yeah, so same. what did you think about I thought, I thought it was really interesting I mean obviously it was less of a story arc if that makes sense. it was five chapters so you yeah know, it doesn't have much time to to tell a full fleshed out story no one really had any big character development or anything but i like i liked the world building i liked the setup obviously now i i to be fair i may it has been a week since i've read these <laughs> uh, so if i forget anything i am sorry in advance <laughs> no okay. i actually had to reread it because we kept postponing the recording of this episode <laughs> due to life stuff yes. from everybody. I, I'm actually surprised it's only been a week. Me too. Yeah, I feel like it's been like a month <laughs> since yeah, we yeah. last recorded. <laughs> but it's only been a week. I need to start editing these episodes. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> Hopefully I make it easy. Don't worry. Don't worry, guys. It'll be fine. Any other thoughts? I you, just Agra? general uh, thoughts? Uh, yeah. Uh, just general thoughts? Yes. Yeah, I mean it's good. We can get <laughs> I'll wait till we get into specifics. Okay, okay. Okay, that's fair. Okay, Lucian, what are your thoughts on the whole arc as a whole? I love it. Uh, uh, but I don't want to get too, too specific. I'll get incredibly in-depth on Chapter 97 later. Um, but, you know, we get to meet, you know, Smoker and Tashigi. We get introduced to this mysterious dragon character... You know, there's the whole Luffy's execution stuff. There's so much compact, dope stuff happening in five chapters. It's crazy. Um, I love it. But what about you, Saflam? Uh, I kind of want to just get this out of the way. The whole buggy Alvita thing, it's lame. I don't Agreed. like it. Agreed. He uses Wrong. it to... <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I can't believe... I honestly was very shocked. I oh, that they came back? I mean, no, her. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like, what do you mean? Oh, I, I forgot she existed. She was like, I'm <laughs> the first person you beat or whatever. I was like, what? I don't remember you. Uh, you had Luffy's reaction. Of, <laughs> I've never seen you before, which you haven't. <laughs> in all fairness. Well, I mean, I have many times. Just not in context. <laughs> Fair. Um, I just didn't like that whole it was they were there just to make the moment cool like the moment that he made cool is amazing like I think I like it better in the manga than I do in the anime which is crazy to me I want me. them back to be clear <laughs> if, they, if it was just this I don't I, I would want them to do more with them mm -hmm. I plead the fifth I negro um, I assumed <laughs> so I, I like you to. yeah so that was the only <laughs> thing I didn't like about the arc I like all the setup with with Smoker and Tashigi. They're basically like the new characters that were introduced and kind of delved into a little bit. Tashigi more than Smoker. Um, and just like, and Dragon 2, introduced in Chapter 100. Like, Super cool. Uh, throughout One Piece, the biggest like characters are introduced at like milestone chapters. Like, for example, Chapter 50 is when we meet a Dracul Mihawk. Uh, our Spanish really? influenced uh, Shichibuka. Yes, it's exactly chapter 50. Wow. He's introduced in chapter 49. Like they, you see his silhouette, and then 50 is when he's properly introduced as Dracul Mihawk, one of the oh. seven warlords of the sea. And then chapter 100 is here we have a dragon's introduction. And technically, you could say that chapter one introduces Shanks, who is also a big player. 
of yeah. the One Piece world. So uh, at like big milestones for the One Piece, like manga as a whole, at big numbers, like 150, 200, 250, like, like that. I find most um, manga do that. They really, they really like hitting those milestone goals. And also it's like an I easy guess, number to remember. Yeah. And it's also easier because you are one or one person in a small group of assistants. So you can, you are guaranteed to be able to hit that goal. Yeah. Like with the TV shows, you have to worry about, you know, production. Maybe you won't make it to that really special part you wanted. You'll be, you know, not be able to afford it or not have that scene. With, um, you know, comics, you rarely hit that number. Um, you know, it's easier because you're a smaller staff. Speaking of like stuff that he had to cut out, like I said in an earlier episode, he wanted, Oda wanted to like finish the East Blue Saga at chapter 100. I think his editor wanted it or he wanted it, I'm not really sure. But he wanted to end at chapter 100, but he wanted to write a bunch of stuff in between. I think he talks about it in SBS later. Uh, Usopp like gets new equipment, like Sanji, the way he yes. got that fish. And so the anime basically took all his ideas, I, I believe, mm -hmm. and expanded upon them. Yeah, you're so, right. So like how Usopp got his goggles, how Sanji, like he wanted Sanji to go into a food competition. What I, which I, I like Usopp's story a little bit better Usopp's in the anime. Usopp's is better, yeah. The Sanji, I like this, that Sanji just buys this fish. I don't mind. It's I honestly his don't little remember arc is anything kinda... that Usopp or Sanji did this well, entire exactly because they don't. They, that's the point. They, they, really they do don't much. do yeah. those in the manga. You will they see do it in, in the anime. You will see in a. a like handful of chapters uh in place of like an sbs in the viz version uh like a cut panel where oda will be like hey i wanted to include this you know usopp has these new goggles now here's where he bought them in logue town my editor had me cut it <laughs> so you'll see that in like 10 or 12 chapters or whatever uh aggro but in in the anime that's included uh, and that was intended to be included, but due to you know time or editor stuff, whatever, it got cut. Um, and I think they're trying to kind of follow that Zoro storyline that we see in the manga, where he his like ambition and his it's kind of everything's kind of set up in this arc. So, so even like uh, Tashigi and Zoro's conflict, like <laughs> they don't uh, just. I'm just gonna get this out of the way. Tashigi is like the most useless character i hate her so much like she's sword girl right just, yes yeah this the girl she's that zoro the meets didn't fall down the stairs no that's not <laughs> kuina i don't it's think it's not it is. kuina but zoro does um <laughs> constantly say like you stole my best friend's face <laughs> Yeah, he's just like you're just a copycat of my dead friend, loser. <laughs> like, I, I like their relationship because of the way Zoro treats her, but I do understand disliking her. Uh, if not for her Zoro's interactions with her, I, I don't think I'd like her. But because of the way Zoro treats her, I like her. I like her I introduction. Think she's pretty here. cool so far. She has a like pretty basic arc that's gonna come up. Like, obviously, right now, she thinks absolute justice. Like, we went to Marine headquarters, actually, in one of the chapters. The and first one, yep. For, yeah, for the first chapter, we, we see the the bounties and all the people that Luffy defeated. And I'll ask you about that later, Inagro. But it's just her idea of, like, all... Like, her idea of, like... She's, like... Is, is it fair to say that she's for sword control? Like, a form of gun control, but with swords? Is it fair to no, say that? No, I think she's just greedy. I think she's just like, there's all these legendary swords, and they don't belong in the hands of pirates. They belong in my hands. Like, because I, I didn't want get the that cool at all. swords, not the <laughs> I did not pirates. Get that, at all. that did not come across at all to me. I mean, she did say that she didn't want it for herself. She just didn't want it to be in evil hands. But again... Why do you think you have the authority to make that decision? Because you're a Marine? And, and Zo like Zoro says in the, the chapter, he says that the occupations reflect the time that we live in. Like, we can't all be goody two-shoes like you. We have to survive and stuff like Like, Zoro became a bounty hunter because he was starving and he didn't have money. <laughs> and he yeah. didn't know where he was going, right? So he had to become a bounty hunter to eat food. Even the it, shop owner is like, man, I hate your stupid boss. Damn Marines. <laughs> I, I made way more money when pirates were here. 
And by the yeah. way, that was extended upon in the anime more, like, of this yeah. town oh, thrived yeah, like all the shops with pirates. Just... Um, yeah. And the Logue Town as a whole does not like the Marines' presence here. Be especially the, the shop owners do not like the Marines' presence here because it's less yeah. profitable, right? They're right before the Grand Line. So mm -hmm. it used to be this, like, you know, pivotal stop on the way from, and, you know, like the Don Creek Pirates, the way back from the Grand Line, right? The thriving economy. Yeah. Exactly. But now, because you know, smokers there and the Marines are there. No pirates are going to dare to go there. Um, aside from the idiot strong ones. Uh, <laughs> so, and it's, yeah. it's funny because usually pirates are seen, are, are shown as like, uh, pillaging and, you know, doing bad stuff throughout the entire story. And then we come to this sword shop owner and he's like, Man, my free market has been taken away by the government. <laughs> <laughs> very, <laughs> very conservative thing to say, yeah. Mr. Sword Owner. Um, but yeah, I hate Tashigi. She's she has a good introduction, and you can see where she's supposed to go. Um, but I don't want to spoil where she goes or anything like that. But I don't know. She just I don't want to say anything. Yeah, just, I, like her I don't so like far. her. Yeah. Yeah, I like her so far. That's a that's a good way to put it. Uh, Inegra, what did you think of chapter ninety two? It's ninety two, right? Sendai Kitetsu? That's ninety seven. Mm. Oh wait, ninety seven. Uh, but yeah, do we want to go over the bounty stuff the, first? The what? The bounty stuff, like with oh, headquarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's, that's the first that's one. That's a better idea. That's a better idea. Yes. Um. So we start off in the first chapter with everyone, like getting. You know, Nami gets the paper delivered, and the crew finds out... Well, it, it cuts away first. But the crew finds out Luffy has had a bounty of 30 million berries placed on him. Uh, <laughs> for reference, Buggy had one of 15 million, Don Krieg had one of 17 million, and Arlong of 20. Uh, and Damn, the... Arlong of like 20? Yeah. What? And I, I have the chapter open here. Yeah. The headquarter commander here is saying in the east blue the average is three million for bounty uh and these you know crews were the top dogs where all their captains were 10 million and so uh even though the initial bounty of 30 million seems excessive uh you know 30 million of an initial bounty is very high but that's what they give uh luffy as his abnormally high starting bounty <laughs> I want to do a warning for you, Ayanagro. This is a big problem with the One Piece community. They 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 make a connection between bounty number and power level. Like <laughs> yeah, as like a dragon a ballsy like scouter. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not the connection at all. The higher your the higher your bounty, the more dangerous you are to the world government. Mm -hmm. So that's what bounty is based on. And that's why Luffy has 30 million, right? Because he defeated what you're all saying these. Is whoever has the highest bounty is the strongest of them all. Yes. No. I mean, <laughs> in a way, yes. But <laughs> in a way, yes, that is true. But like later down the line, people will be arguing. It's like so. The person with the highest bounty can beat just... Goku. No. <laughs> both of you stop right now. Stop it. We will get to power level discussion later. I either uh, really enjoy or really hate power level discussion. We'll I find out which one this is. I honestly don't like like power level discussions because of the One Piece community because of all this just like bounty levels and like oh like Luffy could take Goku and they just like they, they like <laughs> no you like can't I hate I hate like crossover power levels they don't count yeah that's, that's fair. true I agree with that um but like for example here. Smoker easily took Luffy. Yes. Like two seconds. Luffy could not hit him. Luffy cannot defeat Smoker, by the way. Mm. Just letting you know. Um, Tashigi is a punk. Like, she sucks. I don't know why she's a major <laughs> sergeant. I don't know. What oh, she can beat two punks. Can't beat Zoro. Sucks. Uh, anyways. No, she looks cool doing it, though. 
Ugh, she looks cool Who's losing. <laughs> no, losing is lame. I mean, in all, in all fairness, she did lose to Zoro. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how many like other pirates she'd lose to, but she does seem weak at the moment. <laughs> she is weak. What do you mean she seems weak? She's. I just mean, I... in the little bit we've seen, she comes across yeah. as weak, but she did take out a bunch of other people single-handedly. Like she, she is strong within a normal range. It's just when you compare her to like a Zoro, you know, she's gonna lose. <laughs> but I feel like Zoro would lose to Smoker too, right? Because yeah. he has devil fruit power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, Smoker is. I don't know if they've gone into the details of that yet. Yeah. We we can if you want, but. Uh, oh, ugh, fudge! Sorry. No, no, that's I... okay. I'm just letting you know that they <laughs> haven't gone into like. Devil flute, a lot of detail, devil fruit, yeah. like classification stuff yet, and all that. He doesn't get cancer from smoking. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Oh, I've talked about how my favorite he's smoking scene. twice. <laughs> so really, he's gonna have double cancer. He has the tumor, tumor, no me. Super cancer. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, what if somebody had the power to give cancer to people? Oh my god, that'd be overpowered. I think that's like that is like some super villain. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, just like my favorite moment with Smoker and why I love him way more. To Tashiki just still didn't exist at all. Anyways, um, Smoker, he was like walking down the street because he he's heard the, he's heading towards the the town square because of all the pirates and Luffy and Buggy and stuff. And uh, this little girl, she has three scoops of ice cream, <laughs> and her dad's like, "Be careful!" She bumps into him, and you think it's gonna be oh, Morgan yeah, Town cool. all mm -hmm. over again. Yeah, and then he says. I'm sorry, little girl. Looks like my pants ate your ice cream. Go buy five scoop ice cream. <laughs> and it's just like, I love him. He's the best Marine so far that we've met. I just like, I don't know, people that are like mean in fiction, but they're like nice to kids. That always gets me. I don't, I don't know. even I think mean. he's mean. Who has he been mean to? No, I, yeah, like he's. That's true. He, sure, he's part of the Navy. But he's like, just doing his job. Like he. Yeah. he you know, tracks yeah, down pirates and takes them down. Like, the citizen, like, shopkeepers don't like him because of, they take away his business, but I don't think he's mean to anyone. Yeah, that's true. You, but, yeah, you're you're totally right. He's not mean. He's just, he has that, like... He has a mean look. Boiled, <laughs> like, hard-boiled look yeah, about him. He does. And usually in stories, it's like, you have to put a, like... In The Last of Us or something, you put a little girl with the hard-boiled mm -hmm. guy, and then he it melts his heart. But this guy's immediately like, "Here, yeah. <laughs> take my money, go buy more ice cream." <laughs> <laughs> he is the highest-paid man there, though. So my favorite smoker moment within the Lobe Town uh, arc here was, uh, you know, all the the Marines as like all the pirates are in the uh, like execution area, and. You know, all of the small fry are like, should we fire? Like, should we fire on, you know, Luffy and Buggy and Alvida? He's like, no, stop. Don't rush things. He's like, have I ever let anyone escape here, like, even once? Oh, yeah, like, he's <laughs> smart like, about no. it. He's like, good, then shut up and let them kill each other. <laughs> like, <laughs> why would we interfere when they're killing each other? Relax. <laughs> you know, like, to me, that's just the smart thing to do. And uh, I don't know, I, I respect it, you know? <laughs> I never would definitely go in guns blazing. <laughs> what do you uh, what do you think about Smoker so far? I know we haven't seen much of him, but what do you, what do you think uh -huh, so far, Agro? Yeah, yeah. He's he's cool so far. I like him. He obviously uh is not a bad person per se, and he was also he respects Luffy already. Mm. You know, like he's he's not a bad person. Mm -hmm. But he's very cool and all about catching them pirates. <laughs> yeah. Gotta catch them all, Pokemon. <laughs> Luffy's like a legendary Pokemon he can't catch. Man, that sucks for Smoker. <laughs> Chasing a teenager down. I also love it's his like... just like, who gives a shit about upper? Like, <laughs> I don't care about brass. We're going to the Grand Line. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tashigi had to what's it called had to be like I'm going too <laughs> what do you think about her looking like Kuina in Agra because you always I bring mean, up her death 
You do. I'm never going to forget it. Never forget. Happen. Um, Hashtag justice for Kalina. Rip. <laughs> yeah, I, I got... I mean, she was cool. Like, not enough to have a strong opinion. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, we got the bounties out of the way. They enter the town... And everybody goes their separate ways to do stuff. And this is when the anime kind of expands on it a bit. But in the manga, it's pretty cut and dry. The only thing we focus on uh, is Zoro. The best chapter. Zoro, sure. Oh, yeah. It was... Ugh. It's weird. This was done better in the manga than it was in the anime. This and the moment later at the at the stand. But the moment where he... Well, let's, let's ask Inagra's thoughts before we go into detail. Yeah, what did you think about uh, the sword shop chapter? Sa- uh, Sandai very, Kitatsu. Very much enjoyed the sword shop. Yeah? I'm very interested in uh, the Great 21. Yeah. By the way, they as, say that there's 12, 21, and 40 in the version you read. That's not right. It's 12, 21, and 50. Just to let you know. Huh? Uh, <laughs> so in the version you read, uh, I'll go more into all this later. It, but it said that there were 12 supreme grade, 21 great grade, and 40 skillful grade, or whatever terminology they used in Viz. But for whatever reason, there is not 40, there are 50 skillful grade, just as a to note. So they, they just I got the number wrong in what you read. I remember those existed. I only took a note of the great 21. There are 12 <laughs> supreme. <laughs> there are 12 nice. above that. Anger and hate <laughs> are supreme. Oh. <laughs> Give in to your day. anger. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, the sword chopping was super cool. Yes. I very much enjoyed uh, as we were going, I'm going to risk getting my arm cut off. Because <laughs> I'm just that cool. And the other, the shopkeeper going, yeah, you are that cool. Here's a free <laughs> I love, I love how he told his wife, He's like, what's wrong with giving a man his dream? Like, passing down a dream to another man. And she's like, okay, just clean the bathroom. <laughs> like she didn't... And he's like, okay. <laughs> that is wife goals right there. <laughs> <laughs> like my husband say like something really badass. And then I'm just like, okay, but wash the dishes, please. <laughs> I like the names of the swords. Like Wado, yeah. Wado Ichimonji being, uh, what does it mean? The I'm straight probably path. not going to remember any of them. The narrow path, Wando. It's the sword that Kuina used. Yeah, it's so Zoro's like main blade, the white sword, is Wado Ichimonji. Um, and it's uh, 21. It's one of the 21s, right? The great, yep. great swords. Uh, I just love the name meaning like the straight path, because that's what he's going on. He's going on the straight path. And then uh, Kalina's sword, it's called Shigure, and the uh, only reason why... <laughs> uh, Tashigi's. Right? Yeah, Tashigi. What did I say? You said Kalina. <laughs> Aha! I knew it! <laughs> I knew it all along! <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even notice. excited for the twist reveal of the figure. <laughs> okay, you don't have to hide it anymore. I played the fifth! Objection! <laughs> Relevance. Um, so... Uh, her name, her sword name is Shigure, right? Yep. And the only reason why I'm going to remember that is because I watched Katekyo Hitman Reborn, and one of the characters in that uses the Shigure sword in you, the uh, rain sword style, or the water, the way of the water, or something like that. It means like rain or something like that. That's interesting. And I really love that character in Katekyo Hitman Reborn, so I'm going to remember Tashigi's dumb sword now. Thanks a lot, Tashigi. Uh, or queen, or whatever your name is. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Sandai Kitetsu is the third demon cutter, I believe. Yeah, the third and Kitetsu. It is, yep. And it's one of the 50 swords, and its brother, its older brother, Nidai Kitetsu, is the second demon cutting. And then, what's the first Shodai one? Kitetsu. Shodai Kitetsu is number one? Yep. That's yeah, one of the 12 supreme... All... Uh, that's one of the 12 supreme uh, swords, and then... Nidai Kitetsu is one of the 12, or sorry, one of the 21 great grade swords. They do actually go into this in the chapter, by the way. They don't in the Viz version for some reason. Like, they do what? not elaborate on this at all in Viz. 
so Because I, I read the Viz chapter, and then I was like, I don't think there are 40 swords. Let me read, like, a, a <laughs> fan-translated version. I was like, oh, that's wrong. Wait a second. They didn't talk about any of the history of the Sandai Kitetsu here. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> that's really important. So weird. Because every so single... So the thing with the Kitetsu family is that um, the owner uh, of the shop mentions that all the way back to the Shodai Kitetsu, the first one, the swords have been cursed. So the Shodai Kitetsu, the Nidai Kitetsu, and the Sandai Kitetsu, all of them are cursed. And many, many swordsmen end up dead after using one. Uh, of course, we see uh, Zoro throw it up in the air and, you know, stick his arm out, testing his, uh, <laughs> testing fate. But, um, yeah. <laughs> His, actually, his muscles were so ironclad. Yeah, it just bounced. <laughs> <laughs> like a basketball. <laughs> um, and then there's the Yubashiri, which is my favorite name. It's my favorite sword out of all of them that were introduced in this chapter. And it's the sword that belongs to the shop owner. Mm -hmm. um, Not anymore. It, <laughs> yeah, he gave it to Zoro. Uh, it's, I think it means... No cutter or something like snow that. No run or snow chaser. Yeah. Yeah, snow chaser, Yubashiri. I just I love any names with snow or like rain or stuff like that, which is why I like Shugure and then Yubashiri. And then you the Yubashiri sword is just like this this random shopkeeper at like sees that Zoro's cool AF and is like, here's my family heirloom. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's like, I sorry, you, you used three swords? Order. I guess you need a third. <laughs> and just like, I don't know. I like Yubashiri. I have a, like, maybe because I like the shop owner and like why, how he tried to trick him and how he doesn't like the government. I don't know. Mm. I just like Yubashiri. And the name is really cool, too. Yeah. I, I love he... the sword grading system and all that. Uh, yeah. Any last thoughts? Well, so... Oh, yeah, we have to talk... The sword cutting is on. The... So, the swords are... Ba like, in One Piece, the sword grading system is called Meito, right? Like, the 12 supreme grade, the 21 grade, 50 skillful. Um, we went over the blades and their grades already. Um, but an interesting thing about that is... Um, it's based on a real life system called the Wazamono, uh, which are, were based on like old Japanese swords. Uh, it was used to identify swords of like exceptional quality and exceptional swordsmiths. Um, you know, way way back in the day in Japan. Uh, so in the original classification of Wazamono blades, there were twelve supreme grade blades, twenty one excellent uh, blades, and fifty very good blades. <laughs> very good yeah and the <laughs> like japanese uh for the wazamono blades uh was let's see the 12 supreme grade was saijo o wazamono o wazamono for the 21 and let's see Yoki or Ryo Wazamono. Exactly. And so in Japanese, they actually use the terminology of Wazamono. Um, so, you know, they use the term Meito just as like a famous sword or a legendary sword um, for Viz and Funimation. But <laughs> they do literally reference um, the Wazamono grading system, uh, which is really cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. So it's based on an actual. Uh, you know, sword grading system from, uh, let's see, when was the initial uh, grading system I would guess here? The, I think 1797. The Edo period. Yeah, so Tokugawa Shogunate, 1797. Yep, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Columbus sailed the ocean blue a lot of years before that, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just an interesting little fact. Uh, that I, I thought was really cool, and one of the reasons that this is my favorite chapter of Logue Town for sure. Oh, my favorite chapter is chapter hundred. That's fair. It's, just the, it's fair. the first my page is just is Luffy died. <laughs> that is a great. What an yes. awesome like name for a chapter, right? Like, what's the Imagine beginning of the character dies? 
Because <laughs> manga is now Le- most of the time the name leaks before anything else. Yeah. Like, oh, that, that would have been what I was calling oh. the second monthly. That the name usually came out a week before anything else about the chapter came out. Oh man. So we just got the name. So imagine just getting Luffy died. <laughs> and that's it. No, I love the Actually, the. the... 2002? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It's 1999, no probably. It's probably 1999 right now, because he started publishing in 1997. And there's 54 weeks in a year. So actually, it's still 1997. Oh, no. it's No, no, it'd be about 1998. Yeah. Well, yeah. With, with, with breaks and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. He yeah, didn't okay. take a lot there's, of breaks in no the beginning, actually. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Internet leaks for One Piece. <laughs> Uh, I love the 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 narrator. What he says on the first page of Luffy dies, a legend. I'm gonna read it right now. A legend passed down into the far, far future. A story that began long, long ago. Ooh. That's just like I actually I did like the the title in that the next chapter is the le- legend begins. begins. But this this panel is like, whew. Just really good. The amount of, and also at the end of the first chapter, the mayor of Luffy's town, like the, the townspeople, are all cheering about it. Yeah, everyone gets the and, news about the bounty. Uh, yeah, like and across, they're all happy. Yeah, so like Shanks's crew gets the news. Luffy's town gets the news. Um, yeah. I was yeah. surprised to see Shanks. Uh, I just I loved what the mayor said because uh, the barkeep lady, I can't remember her name. She said, uh, it's his dream, right? So look how happy he is. This is awesome for him. And then the mayor says, is it his dream or is it his destiny? Ooh. <laughs> Which is just, uh, it blows, like, I nagger. I don't want to say anything because I don't want to spoil you or anything like that. Um, but just intensive foreshadowing. I will, I will no, say I'm, that. I'm sure, I'm sure there's no, what's, no, what's, no, nothing. No thing whatsoever on uh, either some sort of predestination or destiny or some sort of thing. Luffy definitely uh, didn't uh, have the entire platform be struck with lightning, and then he was fine. Yeah, what do you so, think well, the deal with that is? Well, Sanji, do you believe in a higher power? <laughs> he immediately <laughs> says to Zoro right after that. Uh, I have no idea, because that's like... I think it's Way luck, above. fate, God, no, like it's something. It's not. It's someone, not random. Happens like what? What do you think it's it a is? Fictional story. It's not random. Obviously, mm. uh, I, you obviously don't say. Uh, I, I'm not. Way. But because yeah, what what do you? Yeah, know what would be your guess as to what happened there? If I had to, I don't know because this would imply, like. There's any option I have is like way too far out there for what we have now, but I do imagine it will eventually get that far out there. But it gets pretty yet, far so out there, so toss I, out any yeah, guess. Anything I, yeah, okay, anything it. I currently have. We got time travel. That's an option, most unlikely because it's a lightning strike. Okay, we got someone planned this all from the beginning. Again, really unlikely, but possible. Uh, like some random person planned it uh some all powerful being planned it mm-hmm. probably maybe the government planned it that'd be an option i think i'm gonna read to you the first chapter of chapter 100 because it's also a quote that i really enjoyed Ooh, in that the is manga. Good. um this is okay these are things that cannot be stopped inherited will the destiny of an age and the dreams of its people as long as people continue to pursue the meaning of freedom these things will never cease to be Gold Roger, Pirate King. And there's the face of Dragon saying, a pirate? Yes. That's fine, That's too. That's fine, too. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think Dragon is? Let me look at the quote in my version. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's probably a little different. But that it's, is... It's a little different, but it's it's the same. Uh, these things cannot be stopped. An inherited, an inherited strength of will, one's dreams, the ebb and flow of the age. Is, as long as people hunger for freedom, these things will exist. Um, Such a weird way to I, say I, that. I, I'm guessing he, uh, that guy works for the government. 
Do but, my best. Uh, but Smoker said that Dragon, the government. Yes, his name is Dragon. But Smoker said that the government's hunting you down. Like, what are you doing here? He asks him that. I did not get that from that. I see that. <laughs> I do have that, actually. <laughs> I mean, maybe he is. We don't know. He could be I mean, so high up like... that. Like... <laughs> the, his own, the his own employees are hunting him answer. down. <laughs> I mean, there's a chance, who knows? There's some sort of... I don't know. Someone's obviously guiding him, Luffy, in some capacity. Mm. Mm-hmm. I agree with that sentiment. Yet to be seen who or what. Because... Probably a what, to be honest. I think, what does Smoker say in, that, in the chapter where Luffy dies? He says... Let me find it. Um... He says, why did he smile? Did he know that he would be saved? No. At that instant, he realized that his very life would come to an end. He came to to terms with his death and smiled. And then they're like, we should chase. Oh, and then he asks his subordinate if he's ever seen a pirate smile. And he's like, what are you talking yeah, about? Have you ever seen a pirate smile at the execution stand? Execution stand. And then Smoker. I got it. <laughs> the one but that's... piece okay. is the ability to control I don't know, Destiny. Or whatever we're going with, like, you know, basically with that. Mm -hmm. I'm calling it, the One Piece is the ability to control Destiny in some capacity, and the lightning, and everything that's, uh... Gold Roger. Is that his name? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Gold Roger uh, died. No comment. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say anything, but... That doesn't mean much, though. <laughs> like, him, if he, he seems like someone, from what little I know about him, he seems like someone that if he had a plan and a goal, he would uh, be willing to die to accomplish them. That's fair. That's you a know, his pretty solid analysis. Lines. Yeah. He has very, very few lines, but you know, from what little we know, he does seem yeah. like who would, be le- who would uh, absolutely die to accomplish his goals. You are paying attention. But, but, but we'll see. I you know, there was an interesting <laughs> line. Not really. A pretty, pretty <laughs> tiny line, but I think the significance it held was pretty big since I think this is the first time it has been mentioned by anyone. Uh, as Luffy is standing on the execution stand, just some random, like, almost like police officer, almost like security guard. You know, like not not even a navy member says like, "Hey, get down there!" Like that's a that execution stand, like belongs to the world government. Like that's under the world government's jurisdiction. Mm-hmm. That I believe is the first time we've ever heard of the world government. Uh, what do you oh, think yeah, the world I, government no, is, we, Agro? We heard about them earlier. Um, yeah, Did I we? Have, I have a screenshot actually. Yes, very beginning of chapter ninety-five. Um, where is it? Be do be do ba do be do be do. When we flashed over to the navy headquarters under direct control of the world government. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. So we do have like just flat out stated there is the world government and they do directly control, uh, the navy. Gotcha. Shocking. Who could have foreseen? <laughs> I also feel I like they were mentioned last arc. But I, I could be wrong, but I feel like they were mentioned before. I don't know. I, I can't I, at least I I had heard the name. It could that could be like a you know. I don't think it's slide been actually I, uh, much. I scrolled I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw some art today. I was like and I shared it. And I was it's with you so guys. And I was cute. Like, oh hey, that's a cute one piece art. It had the, like if it hadn't been if I hadn't read one piece, I would have just scrolled past and like, oh that's cute. And that's that's some cute art that I don't not paying attention to. So I, I know a few things about One Piece that I'm sure I just don't know. Mm-hmm. Probably, uh, I'm sure one day I'll see a character and be like, whoa, that character's from this? <laughs> can't believe it. It's a crazy. Huh. Um, uh, just like a little bit of side note. I liked uh, how all the the side characters, not really side characters, but like the the background characters, they're all dressed like to the nines with style. 
I, I like all the shirts have got like a, a brand on them or their jackets are really cool or just I just wanted to say that. No, just yeah. Everybody in the background looks fantastic. And then that little exchange between uh, Luffy and Buggy. <laughs> Luffy's like, this is the first time I've seen an execution. He's like, you're the one who's being executed. What? Are you kidding? Me? <laughs> it's like two peas in a pod. I loved, <laughs> I loved when Buggy turned into a Buggy. Yeah, that's that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Smoker had a very, very large motorcycle, so we're getting yeah, closer it... to the one he's carding racing, racing game. <laughs> it's funny because, like, they kind of make fun of Alvita and Buggy's little transportation things, and then Smoker has his weird, goofy transportation thing. I mean, but Buggy it's cool turns because... into a car. <laughs> the chop-chop car, as he puts it. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's it's so like the goofiness is still there, even though I, I wouldn't say these chapters are serious, but they they delve into a lot of the lore, and so you get serious kind of, and then you see the chop chop car, and you remember who's writing this? It's the the goofy seventeen year old, nineteen <laughs> year old? I don't know. What did you think about the execution and the the smiling and? Uh... Yeah, what are your thought that that was a uh... very very in character for him. That's good. Like Luffy smiling I at his death. It. Yeah. Do you think I that was all about? Because like he, in that moment, right? Like he he can't be king of the pirates, right? Like he's accepting his death. He will no longer be king of the pirates, but he's smiling. See, like I know they said that. I like. I don't know. I would, if unless they had said that line, I would have just thought, oh, oh he, he thinks he's not going to die. So he's whatever, or he'll die, and but he'll still be king of the pirates somehow. Yeah, hundred percent will be. Maybe he has to he's die. He's gonna to do that, be, but, you know. Yep. And this this I'm city is called. How much I am still liking him saying, "I'm going to be king of the pirates." <laughs> <laughs> like, well, it better... escalates. At some point, it's going to stop escalating. I'm going to start getting annoyed. It's never going to happen. I hope I'm wrong. Luffy's going to be the pirate I hope king. It continues to scale up until he's speaking to literally every human on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> I I once read the, uh, a late, one of the later chapters in a library, and uh, the chapter ended so abruptly and so fast, and I was so upset because of that, and I yelled out loud because of the cliffhanger, and then the librarian, I'm, I was friends with the librarian, and she was like, what, is he gonna, like, die or something? And I was like, no! Luffy's gonna be the pirate king! What are you talking about? <laughs> She's like, okay, crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did that at work once. <laughs> what with One Piece? No, the uh, chapter one hundred and oh no, thirty. I know exactly what this is about. Back on Titan. Oh, oh, God. I'm so shocked. Thank God we're just talking about One Piece. We're not talking about Attack on Titan. Mm -hmm. I feel like I never correct a dissertation now. paper. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. That he could. But neither of you have finished yet, so I can't say anything. Uh, I'm on the <laughs> anime, so... Lucian Graves, who hasn't read the last chapter <laughs> in a year. Okay. He's read all I've read the second to the last chapters. chapter. <laughs> it's been over a year. It, it, listen, I've read, like, like 800 other pages. chapters of manga, like, you know, a couple You've of days' read, worth like, of anime. pages of One Piece. You watched 50 episodes. So the anime in two days. Like. Yeah. <laughs> he's so mad he's getting cut off. So <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Uh. One day. Oh That's my okay. God. Well, one day we'll do a Attack on Titan podcast, and then we'll be forced to. Um, we'll see about that. English would probably stop being my friend before that happened. But... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Did we cover everything on the island? I feel like we did. I think we just have the declaration of uh, dreams left. Well, there's that. There is something in the a barrel. Oh, come on! Don't don't you dare! <laughs> their feet on a barrel. How dare you? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I just don't understand. 
Why? I'm just here for the blood fe- the blood. Spotter. Listen. It's like a coliseum. It's like they're they're swearing to each other and they're uh cracking open a barrel of booze. All right. <laughs> With your feet? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Sanji is the first one to put his feet up, so that makes sense for Sanji. But, but it does. Why? Yeah. Uh, cause it's cool. Exactly. That's why. why are you asking? What? Why cool. are you questioning it? <laughs> how is it? How is it? Okay. It looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna go through everybody's dreams, and I want Inagro quick. Tell me the first thing that comes to your head when I say it. Uh, to find all blue. What? What? Oh, that's Sanji. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to become the Pirate King. You're just gonna say that. Luffy. <laughs> to be the greatest swordsman. Zoro. Draw a map of the world. Nami Usopp. <laughs> oh, I didn't even say Usopp. I had the pages pulled up. <laughs> become... cheating. You're cheating! Was... My phone was already on that page. <laughs> on the screenshot of it. <laughs> I was just... I was trying to make a game out of it, but it didn't work. <laughs> I, I do, I do, I would have remembered them. And all, so, uh, it's at least except for Usopp. Usopp does have uh, the most generic dream. Yes. Uh, yeah, his, his last, is so, the hardest to define. Uh, there is an is... end goal for the other. Uh, yeah, you know, there's like know, a black and white goal. Of the entire world. That's a pretty big goal. It is. It's, yeah. Uh, I almost Honestly, just said Sanji's something that will get revealed realistic. in the next seven chapters. Whoops. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, that is pretty complex, isn't it? Um, so I, I just realized, you know, we talked about people having reactions. Mihawk is the one who delivered the news to Shanks and his crew. What do you think the deal with that is? Like, um, Mihawk brought Luffy's wanted poster to well, Shanks. I mean, he probably knows, he probably knew Shanks in some capacity, I would assume. I mean, he's like, uh, you came to settle your beef with me. To be honest, they did seem to imply, like, you know, huh? You know, I will. I don't want to fight you anymore. That you have one arm. You know, like, I, I don't want to settle things with a dude with one arm. You know, sort of implying, like, maybe we did used to fight, yeah. but not anymore. I feel yeah. like Shanks I is mean, like a. Sorry, I feel like Shanks is I, like I, a I would proud. Not be surprised. You got sorry. <laughs> I feel like Shanks is is like a proud dad. Like he's going to everybody and telling he's like, "Have you seen this kid? He's amazing, and I love him. And he lives in East Blue, and he's so cool, and I love him." And like everybody I think knows, he, li- him. he believes just as much as Luffy that he's going to be king of the pirates. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, Usopp is in the background of Luffy's picture, and uh, you know they <laughs> Yasop is in Shanks's crew. So I, I would like to believe that Yasop also knows, like, oh, hey, my kid's out there. Nice. <laughs> my kid became a pirate. Maybe. That's cool. <laughs> I'm so proud. He became a criminal. <laughs> yeah. Better than a government <laughs> dog. <laughs> Man, those are your options. <laughs> Pretty much. Be like Rob. Zoro says. Rob. Join government. <laughs> Which is the Rob part. Oh man, I have to send you guys video- these two videos about piracy in, in our history. Like this guy, he he say, he makes two videos, one about like how pirates are basically marketing, branding, and then okay. the I've seen Pirates of, pirates. of the Caribbean. I all, all about real life piracy. <laughs> no. No, stop. <laughs> I think my favorite part of this this whole arc is at the end when they all say their dreams. The reason why I brought that up was because uh, I'm not going to spoil anything. It's a very but good like, moment. Yeah, it's a good moment, but also it's throughout the series we kind of explore like what those dreams mean and how specifically how are they going to accomplish them and maybe even maybe that's not the uh, just the over overall goal, but maybe there's like smaller goals within it and. Just like throughout the series, we explore all those ideas with each one of their dreams. And what is the weight of that goal? Yeah. Like, how heavy is that goal? And is it, you know. And uh, we're not going to see Nami doing a lot of her dream just because. Well, it it is inherently. Yeah. 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 It's anything that is happening at all times. And Oda says in in a SBS later that like whenever they're sailing or they don't need Nami to navigate or like whenever it's downtime, 
she goes and she draws everything that she's seen. They show it more like, in the anime. She, yeah. that, like they that's do, a, yeah. That's a thing you don't need to show. It's a back- background. Yeah. Thing but they also just, every now and then she can go, "Hey, here's my map," because it's relevant to the plot. <laughs> but it also shows like it shows her like what she what challenges she has to face too, just as a cartographer with all the. I don't want to say what what challenges, but it's just so like these all go. These goals are kind of like mm-hmm. cool dreams and I mean, easy. She has to like decide what filler islands to keep on the map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's just like this dream, like to be the greatest swordsman. But like, what does that mean? What little goals do you have to go through that? And does it really mean to be like strongest or does it mean like something else, right? Mm. Or d- to become the pirate king? Like what does that mean in this world? And and what does it mean to Luffy himself? Right. And I just I just love that exploration of character. It's such a simple idea, but because it's a simple idea, you can expand upon it and m- make it malleable basically and adapt it to whatever situation you want to adapt it to. And I think Oda is a master at that of making things simple so that he can build on it and shape it into what he wants to shape it. Because, you know, this story, I never, I I don't know if you would agree with this statement, but this story could go wherever it wants to go based on how he set it up, right? There's there's a lot of places it could go from here. Yeah. Yeah, like... I'm interested. What is the grand line, Agro? (laughs) <laughs> he doesn't know yeah, that yet either. There's there's a lot of like like you said it could go anywhere. But in in turn with that I have no idea or like I don't really have any large theories on where it could go. Yeah. But that's Why not, like not? A bad there's thing. only 951 no, no. chapters to, you know, extrapolate. <laughs> well, even, idiot. Yeah, even even excluding <laughs> that. Currently, uh like the the only ongoing plot lines are their goals. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, and then we have uh, what? Ha- what's the One Piece? Um, and, and what happened to Shanks? And those are, I guess, Hawkeye. But that's more part of Zoro. I would say, goal. Goal. like, going to the Grand Line, being chased by Smoker and Toshigi. What is the deal with Dragon? I think there's a lot more going I, I on guess. than just that. I, I guess those are more of a. To me, it's like a stopping point along the way, you know. Well, like, it, it, Smoker's, you know, epithet is the white chase. <laughs> and he is now, you know, chasing the Straw Hats <laughs> into the Grand Line. Yeah. Without approval like... from uh, the, the brass. <laughs> He's mm-hmm. just doing this to do it. He does not have approval for this, but... Um, Smoker does what Smoker does. I think I agree with Ionagro a bit more about like the over. I, I, like I mean, more of a like every series has a like at least one overarching question or goal or plot line, whatever it is. Like one one through line, or and sometimes that through line can change. Like I'm, I won't get into this one, but Attack on Titan, I think that through line changes two or three times. Um, I agree. But, like, um, another example, I'm watching uh, the show Better Call Saul right now, and there's 60 episodes of that show, so there's tons of other stuff going on, there's tons of little plot lines, but the through line through all of it is how did the character, it's because it's a prequel, how did that character become the character he is in the, at the, you know, in the actual like Breaking Bad? And, like, that's one through line. Whereas, you know, lots of shows can have, and stories can have lots of through lines. But there's usually that that thing. And for now, it's there are six of them. It's what's, I, the, what's their goal, each of their, you know, very, very vague goals. <laughs> and what is the One Piece? Mm-hmm. I think I like that look at it because early One Piece is not very... Like, it is very detail-oriented, but the details don't come back as much as it does in later One Piece, to be honest. No, it, it so, is very, like, long-haul. And I'm sure the, the, late, like, stuff. the stuff coming back in later One Piece is due to early One Piece not having that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and not knowing it's, if they'd have the time to implement it. Like, that's true. 
I'm sure Oda didn't expect to go 1,051 chapters. Uh, I mean, and ongoing, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we record, that is the most current chapter. Um, yes. But, you know. What's the estimates on how much longer it goes? Three years. Okay. That's not that long. Yeah. Uh, I watched this. I, I sent the video yes, to Yes, I you watched, and... uh, like, I think I. It's like 21 minutes. I watched, like, 13 or 14, and then I, I got distracted with something. <laughs> but. Yeah, yeah. I, in the I, longest arc of the series at like currently, right? Yes. Yeah, we I think we're shot. done with it, I believe. I think it's over. Yes. I, uh, I, I, I would like, guess so as well. This this video basically goes into detail about how Oda throughout the years would say like when interviewers asked him the question, how much is left? And he's mm-hmm. literally been consistent since the early two thousands. Yeah. He's been like because uh, because in the early two thousands is when the popularity of it like blows up, right? And so he's mm-hmm. like, now that I have Suisha on my back, I have like Shonen Jump's approval, I can do whatever I want, right? And they of course now they that want I'm more story. Extremely popular and have <laughs> like invulnerability, I can do whatever I want. Yes, yeah. basically. And so he he said like in two thousand, he said twenty years, and it's been. It's been 20 years, Mm -hmm. but because of the pandemic, they couldn't do a lot of those chapters during the pandemic. So it kind of of delayed it a bit. So it was probably supposed to end in like 2023, but now it's going to be like 2025, probably because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's been consistent like since the early 2000s with his predictions of when the series would end. And he's now he now says that after this huge arc ended, he said, it's 90% done. Like, we have 10% left. So are they, you think they're going to the final arc, or will it be smaller? There's arc? a couple arcs left. Yeah. That being said, I have no idea how this is going to finish in three years. Me either. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I want it to go and on then, for another five or six, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, and, you know, like, yeah. again, a smaller example, but, like, the author of the you know, uh, Attack on Titan, he kept saying, oh, we only, like, he, at some point, he said like ten, you know, a year, another year, maybe, you know, ten chapters, ten months to a year ish, and then I think it went on for another two or three years. That's why you have the final. It's the final season, guys. He said it was going to end soon. It's not ending soon. Do a part two. <laughs> oh, it took way longer. Do a part three. <laughs> I hope that happens with One Piece, just a little bit. <laughs> but I also want Oda to be released from his, you know. Yeah. One Piece chains. <laughs> you think he'll make another thing? Or... No, I no, pray to God he, he said, doesn't. I imagine... He said he, he's not going to do anything else. This I is hope his magnum for his I, imagine, I imagine he goes, I'm going he, to... I so, mean, yeah, I ha- don't. He has the most successful comic ever made. Literally, the like, rest of his life his, is... His tales are larger deals. than Batman, Superman, or Spider-Man. He should go yep. sail the ocean. <laughs> Literally, his the rest of his life is he Netflix can make a map of the world and promotion deals. Literally, just merchandising and Netflix. Because uh, I don't know if we should talk about it, but the live action is coming out soon, and they they're filming it actually in South Africa. So he's the executive producer on that show for Netflix. So he's gonna get money from that, and then he's gonna get money from merchandising for the rest of his life and the I mean, life of his great 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 grandchildren. Merchandise- or make any TV show, stop the anime, even all that, just manga sales. He'd be able to... Yeah, and retire, the anime's still going on. A, even if he hadn't made a cent of savings. I agree. Like, he's good. He doesn't need to do anything else. Yeah. He's just been... He just extended it because he had the popularity to do it, and this is the story he wanted to tell, and he had the platform to tell it. Yeah. Yep. Um... I think, and I think we're done with the overall yeah. arc. Yeah, no, definitely. Th- you finished you- the East Blue. <laughs> so you guys want to cover the chapter stories? The chapter uh, cover stories? <laughs> Did you pay attention to the Magro? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> I don't care about the child. I forget his name, Virgil. Kobe. It's Kobe. I, I do have I don't know in who my this notes, Virgil is. by the way. Uh, for whenever he does this, uh, that Kobe is, uh, dash glasses Virgil. So that whenever he refers to glasses Virgil, 
I can double check. Okay, right. Uh, it's Kobe. <laughs> Who is Virgil from Devil May Cry? Yes. Or a yes. Final Fan- okay, okay. I just go the rival character. Just rival character. Yeah. Not Vegeta, it's not Naruto and character. Sasuke. Virgil. Sasuke is a freaking I mean, piece for, of I mean, garbage. Okay, a Virgil is a very specific kind of rival. This is not one. But I've never seen Naruto. I'm never going to see Naruto. So therefore, <laughs> Virgil. The blue Naruto one is for the red oni. Naruto is really good when they're all kids, and then Naruto Shippuden just like I can't watch Naruto Shippuden. It's so weird. I don't know why. But I'm a Kobe huge fan a very, of the kids. Kobe is a very blue oni character. Blue oni. I don't even know what that is either. It's the a Japanese uh, story of uh, like, like a, it's like a classic fairy tale. It's like a trope. Oh, I see. I yeah. see. I see. Blue Oni is and the, Red Oni. Is the Blue Oni like a good guy? Because he's uh, well, I don't know the, the well, traditional story. Uh, basically, yeah, the, like uh, the you know, the I've two of them are different. friends. One of them wants to become friends with humans. One of them doesn't. Uh, and you know, one of them cuts themselves off from humanity. And the Blue Oni or the other Oni. I think the Blue Oni the is the one that. Uh, uh, like cut, le- le- cuts himself off from humanity. Okay, because the red one is usually more open. So there you go. So then the red one goes and joins humanity. The blue one stays secluded. That way, the red one is able to and blah blah blah. Um, so sort of, you know, one becomes a hermit. One, uh, becomes friendly with humans and all that. Doesn't somehow the... that usually goes wrong. I don't know what. Super yeah, well. there's. I've heard various versions. Yeah, there are retellings of it, but I don't know it well enough to really explain it super well. But yeah, yeah, that's a. I regret asking that question. <laughs> <laughs> that was so weird. Um, he's just Kobe. He's not Virgil with glasses. He's not Blue Oni. He's Kobe. K O B Y. He's not Virgil yet. Shut up. <laughs> you wouldn't hear yet. So what are you guys' yet, personal samurai. rankings for the arcs? And then we can go into our Under the Iron Flag official arc, East Blue Saga arc rankings, where we debate over uh, the consensus for which arcs fall where on the East Blue we're Saga. We're debating? Yeah. Remember we said we were going to do this a few episodes ago? <laughs> <laughs> over oh, no. uh what what is you know one two three four five and six for the uh official under the iron flag rankings for the arcs <laughs> official yes like yes. we're official or What's whatever your personal one first sapling me yeah you know me it's uh <laughs> it's gonna be i have to think about it for a second our long park of course okay just because the best thing ever um Obviously, uh, we got Arlong Park at one. We got what's it called at two? The arc we just read, uh, Logue Town. We didn't say that Logue Town is the town of beginnings and endings. Did you know that Gold Roger was born there? I didn't know that. Did they mention that? Yes. Yeah, so it's the town that he was born in, and it's the town that he died in, because the world government is likes poetic justice, <laughs> as you can saw from all their coats. It's it definitely gonna be says our... that it's like the wor- the town of the beginning and end. So uh, I don't know if they mm-hmm. directly say he was born there. I think it's implied. I'm not not I sure. Think... It, it might say it in the in the fan dub. It probably doesn't say it in the Viz no. one. No, it says it in the fan dub. I think Nami says it that he was born there and then he gotcha. died. Yeah, it's probably just the Viz mistranslation then. Uh, you guys need to stop reading the Viz translation. <laughs> kind of trash. Yeah, it's not uh, great. The official version. Yeah, it sucks early you gotta on. Gotta have all opinions. <laughs> okay, so we got Arlong Park at one. We got Logue Town at two. I really liked Seer Village in the manga, so I'm gonna put that at three, which is really surprising for me. Uh, of course, we're gonna do Zoro's introduction at uh, four, which was what was the town called? Uh, th- that's just Romance Dawn. Uh, oh, oh okay. wait, sorry, is it? Um, yeah, yeah, it's all one arc. It's Romance Dawn. Yeah. Um, so I have yeah. to rethink that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put Romance Dawn at four. What'd you put and at three? Sorry. I put Seer Village because I just loved it 
so much more in the manga. It was so strange. It was strange. Because I usually hate Sarah Village in the anime. Um, and then five is Baratier. Am I missing anything? Uh, you're missing uh, Orange Town. Uh, then six is Orange Town. Okay. Actually, switch it. I like Orange Town a little bit more. Okay. So five is Orange Town. And six, I'm writing it down. Is <laughs> I, I, I can argue with uh, or and then forget. six is Rome. No, six is Baratier. Okay. Just because of the the issues with the narrative structure, I'm not saying that like it's the worst arc so far. It's just out of all the arcs, it's not the best. You know, Lucian. Uh, so for me, my number one is Arlong Park. Obviously. Uh, number two would be Baratier. Uh, number three is Logetown. I really like this arc. It's very small, but I mean, it's just so much is mentioned for the first time. There's a lot. Like, chapter 97 might be my favorite chapter so far. Uh, it's great. Uh, Orange Town would be number four. Uh, Syrup Village at five, and Romance Dawn at six. Uh, there's too much like goofy garbage in romance. Not if it was just chapter <laughs> one, it would be like way higher. But the Alveda stuff, the, the Morgan stuff, the Helmepa stuff, uh, the whole Kuina flashback, uh, <laughs> you know, she fell down the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, romance done as a that. whole is not great. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately uh i wish it was totally separate from the rest of that arc that way i could put it higher but it's not so it's I, not it's at the bottom <laughs> i put it high because zoro literally that's Does, it. hey so, i get it i'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna hate on you for it i i respect it just uh personally yeah, yeah. disagree no, i agree what about you okay. aggro yeah um Thinking about going back and forth on my number one and two. We're just going to stick with what I wrote down. Uh, Arlog Park at number one. Oh, yes! Uh, followed we did by it, Baratier. Boys. Very, very closely. I still don't know if I want to keep it there. Well, maybe I'll go back. Who knows? Uh, but then Secret Village at three, four is Orange Town, five is uh, Low Town, and six is Romance Dawn. Three is Syrup Village, and then four is what? Orange Town. Orange. And then Logue Town Romance. Or Romance yep. Logue Town. Logue, then Romance. Gotcha. So we all share a top and bottom, at least? Yeah. Uh. Oh, no. No. We don't share the bottom. <laughs> no, okay. I mean, you guys share your bottom, but my bottom is Beretti. Maybe we should stop saying bottom. <laughs> <laughs> The number one uh, undisputed well, champ undisputed. is Arlong Park. I can do math to make it so that well, we let's have to argue. We'll do about the this. math and then we'll argue about it. Okay, That's so fair. It, it could, number we, one, you could come out with very board, bad and wrong. Arlong Park. Like we can give each yeah. one a numbering system, and then I could do like I, th I think the best way to do mean, it is to do the math and then. Argue about it, and then we'll then we'll argue about it from there. Because like okay. sometimes you'll end up with. Okay, like, let's do this. If there's if if a uh, arc is in two of our rankings, then that's the ranking for it. So for example, Baratie is in second. Okay. For both I, I you and make, Iron. I think. I think eventually this is going to get to be uh very heated one day. <laughs> so let's just. We'll just figure it out as we go. We can yeah, make that's some fair. under the table yeah, deals yeah, yeah. and such. <laughs> Pay each other off. Well, let's see what the math has to say, and then if anyone wants to okay. dispute it. I'm just going to put, like, one, two, three, four, five, six. I do like yeah, Southland's idea of the if, if there are two in one spot, I'm make, then we can just keep I'm gonna it there I'm going to make an Excel spreadsheet real quick. Okay. Tempor like, yeah, let's, in the meanwhile, I will yeah. do what Southland said, and if there are two in one spot shared, that's its spot. Um, yeah, and actually, just do, a, do a point system where number doing, one gets six points. Doing that, and yeah. Then, number one, using like Saflam's method of if it's shared so far is Arlong Park at one, Baratier at two. Of eighteen points. 
Yeah, like the six, more points five, it has, four, three, the two, less it yeah. is. Okay, I'm opening Excel right now. Uh, and the I'm more points it has, the higher screen, it so. is. I think. Like, <laughs> we probably should have figured this out before recording. Ah, yeah, it's fine. But <laughs> whatever. Blank work. Bug. This is I'm the the East Blue <laughs> Saga recap. <laughs> this is here. You okay, guys while it out. I. While I do uh, this, somebody should talk. Yeah, Iron Echo, yeah. you go ahead. If go ahead. you have uh, questions, comments, concerns, or if you want to send us your tier list, you can send it to at uh, the uh, um, at under the iron flag at gmail.com. Did you almost that say banner? At, uh, under the iron flag at gmail.com. <laughs> no, I just completely forgot the okay. name. And if it was Gmail or Yahoo, it's Gmail. He forgot. He forgot. You can also name. leave a review, a five star review. Uh, we're not why back. Why would yet. you leave any other star <laughs> review on <laughs> Apple and other things? If we're putting it on Apple, I don't know yet. If you do send an email, you will. We're, we've recorded about. Uh, if we stick to this schedule, five weeks ahead, so you might hear it read on the podcast. You might not. <laughs> I might just email you back. <laughs> I will also Who have knows, a maybe it will be point. aggro responding to you. So try <laughs> not useless to useless captain. You know, try not to email any Wano questions, please. Oh uh, yeah. Try to keep it topical the to Just the East episodes. Blue. No spoilers in the emails. Yeah, please. Uh do not spoil our untarnished uh, maiden captain. <laughs> I'm a baby. <laughs> Should you be saying virgin captain? Uh, you know, it's a ship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you guys want to talk about the live action while I'm doing this? Because the sure. sets on the live action look amazing. It looks great. Baratie looks great. The head yeah. on the going Mary is really concerning. Oh uh, yeah, it looks like a nightmare. It great. Demon Satan goat. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to Luffy sitting on Baphomet, <laughs> but otherwise, it looks great. <laughs> I don't know how good it'll end up being. It's a Netflix production. Uh huh. Uh, That's true. In some of Cowboy, Bebop, Cowboy Bebop went great, no. and uh, uh, in the same production trash. company, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty uh, sure that like well, some of the people involved with Bebop are also let's involved with this. That. I think just the higher ups is the same. It's not the creative team itself. Correct. Yeah, like the, the writer is a huge fan. Matt Owens. Yes, you're right. He wrote the Luke Cage yeah. show, and the, I love the Luke Cage show. Oh, really? And he's well, a huge, huge, huge fan, guys. Like he went yes. to a recent Cage stream had of some one really of really good and really bad writing. So I could go either way. I yeah. agree with that. Steve Maybe Maeda and Matt writer. Owens uh, are the two showrunners. I don't know much about them, to be honest. Uh, uh, so I, I, Matt I, I, Owens, like, yeah, let's hear. Sorry, uh, Matt Owens no. went on a stream. Uh, he went on a stream of a famous One Piece YouTuber, and he read like one of the latest chapters. And he's like asking all these questions, literally only a fan would know. He's like, "Maybe, maybe this is happening. Maybe this." And then, like, people in chat were like, "Guys." He's a huge fan of One Piece. And the One Piece YouTuber kept saying, I kept telling you guys this and you wouldn't believe me. Here he is. <laughs> uh, it's just, I'm, after seeing, okay, so for me, it was that he's a fan, the main writer. Mm. Um, that was kind of like the first domino that fell for me. And then uh, the, just like the whole production and how much money they're putting into it. Oda is an executive producer, so nothing yes, can be done involved. without his face. in South Africa? Uh, yeah, they're filming like in pools of water, so they're actually going to be yeah. on actual boats in the water. Yeah, I think. Um, where, where are they like filming Cape Town? Right. Yes, they're filming in Cape Town. Yeah. Um. Uh, Orange. The, the and casting for me. The, that yes. Someone cares. Even yeah. If it's bad. Someone yeah. on this. I don't think it... the casting director cares. Uh, yeah. Oda, Hatsu, Oda was involved, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, he was. Luffy he is like canonically, like, uh, not canon. Oda has always imagined Luffy to be like uh, South American, From, like yeah. Brazilian in his mind. So I believe that's why he went with like a, a Mexican um, uh, actor. Uh, and I mean, the actor's 18 years old. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's great. Uh, he's like young, he's energetic, you know. Um, He's inexperienced, but I think that's fine, you know. Uh, the actors who are cast for it seem really excited and 
Like, I think they understand no, the perfect. weight of the show, and so mm -hmm. they, I'm sure, have done and their research. For all of them, this is their chance for a big break. Yeah. The, all the younger cast members. Yep. The actress for Nami uh, is actually a huge fan of the series. She seemed so. like it in her, like, introduction video. Her and uh, Usopp's actor both seemed, like, super, uh, like, with the, like, with it. You know what I mean? Like, they seem yeah. to get it. As soon as they got cast, they changed their Instagram profile pictures to <laughs> the anime versions of their characters. Really? Yeah. That's cool. If you have go any, to the, have I follow them all on Instagram. Have either of you see, seen anyone from the cast in anything else? Um, uh, I, I know that the Spanish like kid. <laughs> <laughs> I know that the Spanish kid. He's in a lot of. Uh, like soap, a Spanish soap operas, and mm. I will actually send you guys some links. There's a guy that I follow, and he used to be in the Hollywood business. Like he worked on movies and stuff like that. Um, like he was on the set of The Dark Knight, you know. Mm. Um, and th this guy, he like knows the people. He's like, because Hollywood is very like, you have to know the people to get things done, right? That he knows Matt Owens. He knows the guy. Uh, the the guy who owns the rights to live action one piece he knows them personally and so he's been basically advocating for it from day one and he made his youtube channel just so that he could advocate for the, the live action show and basically explain how the live action show would work to the one piece fandom his name is randy troy um and so he's done basically every video imaginable about the live action and because it, it's I, I i'd have to vet it for because he does talk spoilers he does talk future stuff but um, basically he shows clips for every one of the actors uh, and you see their range and stuff like that. And it's like, they got this, you know? Like they all, like Usopp's actor has been on uh, Grey's Anatomy. He was really? like a side character. Yeah, he was like one of the patients or the patients. My sisters watched that show uh, over 15 times. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. Uh, and, okay, Nami's uh actress she was in a netflix show and he showed a clip of her he's really good and uh the mexican kid who's gonna play uh usopp i mean the mexican who's gonna play luffy sorry uh he's uh, also really Inaki good but... Gudoy? yes Gudoy? I'm, yeah I'm i don't butchering know that pronunciation name. yeah very um, sorry it's He's not here. Uh, <laughs> what if he's listening? Though? Hey, if you kill your role, we'll be able to pronounce it, probably. You should come <laughs> on to the podcast. Oh, God, Mr. no. We Godi. are not that good. Godoy. Guys, stop. Uh, I, okay, so I'm basically just doing... You guys keep talking. I'm just figuring out. Yeah, no worries. Uh, the only one I, I have seen... Um, I've seen no one else except for Jeff Ward. Who was playing oh. Buggy. Sanji's Go actor Jeff is the Ward. one I'm the most That's excited right, for. Actor. Sorry, I interrupted you, Ionagro. You're good. Uh, Jeff Ward, he was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? If I remember yes, correctly. Yes, he was in Ag the last three or four seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And uh, he was very, very good. He was, he was the comedic relief character, but he also had a lot of good serious moments. Obviously, Buggy does not necessarily have serious moments, but he's very good comedic relief. Mm. Buggy has serious moments, at least in the manga. Um, the anime yeah, play, tones them down, but he has dark moments. I would say. Sure. Also, I have not seen. He is Matt his Owens, character is the happy, nice guy. Matt Owens, the co-showrunner, uh, worked on Agents of Shield as well as Luke Cage. By the way, I don't know so, his role, but he worked on it. Everybody knows each other. Maratier. Um, I think Sanji's voice, uh, Sanji's actor, is the one I'm like most excited for, just because. They they did those memes because he has he's kind of he's British so he ha he shaved his head he has blonde hair, um, and people were like, "Man, Eminem is gonna play Sanji." <laughs> <laughs> they made those memes it's so funny, and he like would retweet them or like repost them on his Instagram story, which was really funny. I thought that was hilarious. Okay, so what's after Barati? Erling. Well, we already did Arlen Park, and then it's Town. Okay, math time. <laughs> Romance Dawn. It's going to be romance. Dot has how many points? It's got six points. Uh, Makes sense. Plus six points, plus four points. That's going to be sixteen points for romance. Dot. I mean, Me. The, oh wait. Oh wait. The other way around. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize you were giving the like multiple points to. I see. Okay, so it's gonna be like golf. Orange Town gotcha. is four points plus four points plus five points. Syrup Village is going to be three points plus three points plus, plus five. five points. Yep. Thank you, Lucian. Baratier is going to be six points plus two points. Ooh, plus another two points. Fancy Baratier. And then Logue Town is going to be five points plus plus three points plus. That's what we uh, did to the argument. Oh, Logue Town, another Logue Town too. Holy crap! We have a tie, ladies and gentlemen, for Baratier and Logue Town, both at 10 points. But let me just do the official. Let me just do without the Baratier and Logue Town. I was Town, popping, but this orders. one didn't pick it up. Let's see if it does it now. There we go. Okay, we got Arlong Park at one. We got uh, Baratier and Logue Town tied at two. We'll talk about that in a bit. I'll leave those two open. We got Syrup Village at three, rank three. Wait, no. Or well, four. It should be rank four, yeah. Yeah, Frank four. Uh, and we got we got Orange Town at rank five, and we got Romance Dawn at rank six. You guys suck. I hate you. Okay, <laughs> I am happy with uh, this uh, list. We still have to choose between Baratier and Logue Town, second, third place. I'm not gonna leave it. It's like, okay. This, this we don't have to arguing. actually think about it. I think it's, it's fine having answer. Logue Town at second. Yeah, no, I agree. Wrong. I I put Logue Town at second. Boo. Yeah, I, I know <laughs> I put man. Baratier at second, but I I think Logue Town is, is great. Baratier is an actual story arc <laughs> with good characters. I mean, things happened. You're. Lots that's I fair. Never is the captain? That is Does fair. Does he get the final say? No. I mean, I, I also put it out too. It's too much. Power. <laughs> I don't uh, want them tied, yo. We gotta hmm. choose. I vote Logue Town in second place. So I, I think it's I, up I to I Lucian. Baratier. I'm going to convince. Oof. I'm going to convince. Okay, one, we have to you convince put it at Lucian. Number two. <laughs> two. Uh, it's an actual. Sendai Katetsu. Your favorite chapter Ooh. is in Logue Town. <laughs> Lucian. <laughs> has just as much world building as those five chapters. Plus actual good character stuff for almost every character. Logetown has more foreshadowing and you know it has more foreshadowing because we've read the latest chapters. <laughs> you know how, how baller Logetown is. <laughs> Wait, I, you know what? You're wrong. What? <laughs> Parati has more foreshadowing. That's false. <laughs> I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm, but I, I could be right. Ooh, these are some <laughs> tough arguments. <laughs> mm, okay. I think I'll put... Think think about... Uh... <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> about, um, Sanji. Oh, you know what? Great point. One I, was gonna arc. Put, I was gonna put... I was gonna put Logetown never have another no. at three. No! But you told me to think about Sanji... And I did. Damn it. So damn now it, Logue it, Town it, is at it. two. Thank you for reminding me about Sanji. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I won. Wait, well, what? Good in that one. He Wait, was good what? in that one, but you reminded me Sanji exists. Uh, yeah, but he bad in the one you're ranking above Baratie. He I'm doesn't exist down. in Logue Town, dude. He, he <laughs> shows up in like four panels. <laughs> it's yeah. official. I'm writing it down. No. <laughs> he just okay. tries to help his captain in in, in Logue Town, and he and then he's like, "Yo, was that God?" <laughs> <laughs> he did have a good line. I will give him that. <laughs> so it's official. Yeah. Yes. So it, it's Arlong, Logue Town, Baratier. What? 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 I mean, romance songs at the okay. bottom, but. Yeah. Okay. So it's Arlong Park. Here, I'll, I'll zoom in on here for our those viewers on who are watching this. Um, it's the official under the iron flag raking for East Blue Saga. Number one, 
we got Arlong Park, best villain in the series, best story in the series. That's not true. So far, best but villain move. in the series so far. It's not true, but <laughs> move on. Logue Town, the best foreshadowing and the best world building in the series so far. I think we Romance got- Dawn had the best foreshadowing. And th- he's actually- <laughs> you're actually not wrong. <laughs> you think you're joking, you're not wrong. Third no. place, we got Baratier. It's got the clunkiest storytelling narrative-wise, but well. it also has amazing Ooh. moments. It's got Mihawk introduction and Mihawk versus Zoro, which is in one of my t-shirts in my closet. And Zoro it's- calling Luffy the pirate king. Yes, that's <laughs> very Nami true. running away, which was very good, I gotta say. Yes. Um... And then in fourth place, we got Syrup Village. It's only up here because it's a lot better in the manga for me. Really well done story, honestly. It was quick read. I love the side characters of Kaya and the, the vegetable kids. The vegetable kids vegetable are the best. Kids. They you are the what? best. Just side be characters. Clear, I'm okay, actually. If you're in mind, I'm fine. I forgot those two other guys existed. <laughs> and they were in Logetown. So I'm okay with it. <laughs> I don't even remember their names. Clawador <laughs> and uh, wait. Well, th- I guess uh, Django Kuro and Django. Sorry, Kuro and um, MJ. <laughs> no, uh, is it? Wait, no. Those those two guys in, in um the pirate or no bounty hunters. Oh, oh Johnny and Yosaku. Johnny and, Yos- the best Johnny and Yosaku. Yeah. I love uh-huh. Johnny and Yosaku. One day those two are gonna show up. <laughs> and we're gonna have the recording and they're gonna be like oh man are you wasn't it cool that they showed up and i don't remember who they were <laughs> i won't blame you if that happens at uh number five we have orange town introduction to buggy the actually the greatest villain in the series so far <laughs> and we get his backstory about being on a ship with shanks Yes, and the North and the South Pole and all that. Mm-hmm. Great arc, great arc. And then at number six, sadly, the introductory chapter for Zoro is at number six. And one I totally piece. understand why. <laughs> Wait, introductory, is... chapter for Z- introductory pa- chapter for uh, One Piece? Like, <laughs> you know, the series? <laughs> yeah, but who cares about the Who one gives piece? a shit about One Piece? I'm here for Zoro. <laughs> Yeah. Screw the Pirate King. I want the greatest swordsman. <laughs> I mean, who but really that's... cares about Luffy? We all know why we're watching. <laughs> Are you watching now? Or did you transfer the anime? <laughs> Apparently, I guess. <laughs> and at number six, we have the introduction to the entire series. Romance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now tell me. I want to know. Based on your current opinion, obviously you have, haven't all both read everything, you, you know, you watch things, yada yada. Currently, don't tell you what, but is there an arc you would rank below Romance Dawn? Uh, that's a yeah. hard one. Really, Lucian? Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. I can't. You can say uh, the name of it if you don't argue about it too much, so I don't get details. But no, uh, if you want to, you don't have to. I mean, again, this is just purely personal, and again, keep uh, for me, this is already in fifth place. Uh, for me, it's Syrup Village. Um, and again, just uh, well, because you, I mean, okay, I mean, after the arcs we have ranked, huh? Oh, I thought you meant with future context. Oh, is there something I'd put below Romance Dawn later? Yes. Let, there, me, let, me look at the, let me look at the arcs. Hold on. I can't think of one. Um, no, I, I, no, 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 I won't mention. I won't it, mention it, what it but... is. I will just say yes or no. Um, mm, no. Yeah, I'm going to agree yeah. with that. It only gets better from here, to be honest. Like, we got through the rough patch. That is good to hear. I mean, there's going to be a little bit of another rough patch, but... I'm really? sure it has ups and downs. I I mean, we'll talk about it, but... Yeah, we'll get, just we'll get there. The, the next saga is just a kind of a slog. What? For me, at least. 
At least in the <laughs> anime. I don't know about the manga yet. I mean, I Syrup Village would have been ranked six for me in the anime, but it's one of my favorites. My top three, I think. Yeah, top no. Yeah, top three for me. Syrup Village. So we just have to read, wait, and read and see. And yeah. that's fair. So the next arc we would be reading is called Reverse Mountain. Oh um, yeah. It is only five chapters. So really? let's do two arcs. The chapter, the the arc after that is um, uh, chapters one hundred six to one fourteen. So we we could read one hundred one to one fourteen and cover two arcs. Do you guys yeah, want to do, do that? that? Okay. Does that uh, work for you as well, Safflam? Occasion. It was the end of the East Blue. You know, yes. Lots to talk about. Okay. Oh wait, uh, special fun fact stuff that I wanted to talk about. I'm just gonna yes. name them off. We don't have to say anything. Okay. Uh. Okay. So when we introduce any new straw hat, the chapter is called Blank Enters. So, for example, when we're introducing Sanji, his chapter is called Sanji Enters, or when Nami, Nami Enters. Uh, I don't think it says Zoro Enters and Luffy Enters, but everybody when they're asks introduced or when they join the crew? When they're introduced. Okay. So it says something enters. And then after, uh, after they join the crew, it's called the... Th the second or the third. So when Nami officially joins the crew, the chapter is called the second. And then when Sanj when Usopp officially joins the crew, I believe it's called the third because he's the third member, right? Um, because oh, Nami was the second to be uh, recruited, but she joined after the whole debacle with Arlong Park. But she's still the second, so she gets that chapter called. But I think he started doing this after maybe Sanji joined or Usopp joined. I'm not really sure about that. Uh, anyways, I think. Sanji's, he's not the fourth though. So it's Zoro's the first. Yeah, because it's Zoro who's the first. And then yeah, Usopp is first the mate, second. Yeah. I mean, Nami is the second. The third is Usopp and the fourth is Sanji, if I'm correct. This may be considered a spoiler, um, so you don't have to answer. I don't okay. know the answer to this. Does this. Is this a continuing thing? I have no idea, but I noticed it and I want to see if it is a continuing thing. Okay, so we'll so keep an eye out for it as, it as it goes on. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Sanji smokes to feel like an adult. We didn't talk about that, why he smokes in, in the Barachi AR. Ah, yes. Uh, here's some funny little thing. In the English dub on Four Kids, Mihawk has a French accent for some strange, strange reason. He does have French imagery. No, he, does he doesn't. Like he doesn't. He has he Spanish, has Spanish imagery. imagery. It's I literally stated on his wiki. French. No, he's listen, a listen. Spanish inquisitor. <laughs> In the wiki, it specifically says that he is based on Spanish imagery because he has the cross and he's obviously like Catholic imagery with the candles and all that stuff. But the thing is, uh, he his name is Dracul Mihawk and Dracula. So they were giving him a French accent because he's from Transylvania, quote unquote. <laughs> it's kind of BS to me. The four kids dub is absolute trash. It's worse than Netflix. Um, and I mean, so it has like a lot of religious symbolism uh, because I think a lot of the swordsmen have religious symbolism just because it's fun. I mean, Mihawk, he's based on Christianity or Catholicism is more likely because it's Spain. And yes. then uh, Zoro is based on uh, Buddhism. We talked about that. Yep. Um, Don Krieg and his crew are also of Spanish in inspiration. They, they also put up a fight against the French restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. Sanji's kind of like. They have a French feel. Barate is a French word, I'm pretty sure. Um, and the French and the Spanish, like I told you guys, they fought all the time during the pirate era. They hate each other all yeah. the time. Even to this day, probably. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so in the pirate era in our world, France and Spain and England were the largest players in the New World as well as in naval, in naval warfare. After, after they... Ch I think we talked about this, but... I think After we talked about they, off stream or yeah. off, off podcast. Oh, okay. Then I'll mention it. Um, after they signed a treaty, they still didn't like each other. So they would hire pirates or quote unquote pirateers is what they were called to attack other countries, naval forces, cities, anything like that. Um, so for example, if France, wa if Spain wanted to destroy an English port, they couldn't do it because they signed a treaty with England and France. So they hired a, uh, ex-naval members or even pirates to go and raid that village. And they were called pirateers. Um, the Shichibukai, which is ah, the seven warlords yes, of okay. the sea, are the pirates of, of the One Piece world. 
uh, are the pirateers of the One Piece world is, is what I should have said. Mm-hmm. They have benefits of their own, but they must obey the government. They don't have bounties. They don't have their bounties don't increase because they're working under the government. And the only two Shishibukai that we know so far are Jinbei, who is uh, who is uh, let Arlong loose passing. to yeah. the East Blue. Yes, and then Mihawk, who we met in Chapter 50 in his fight against Sorrow. Uh, and then there's also the Buggy and the co- co- and the Kobe cover stories, but we haven't finished the Kobe cover story yet, so I don't think we can discuss it in full. But basically what happened in Buggy's uh, chapter story he get he got flung by Luffy. He meets Gaimon. He gets chased by a duck, and then he gets saved by Alvida with a skinny body. And then they meet him back in Logue Town. Basically, that's what happened. Yes, he recovers and, uh, the rest of his body, and then meets up with this crew. Blah blah blah. I think that's the end of my East Blue kind of uh, one last fact. East Blue fact. fact. <laughs> <laughs> one last fun fact: Nami's uh, tattoo is kind of on the back of her shoulder. Uh, shoulder I noticed it's not right on her shoulder in the yeah, anime. Yeah, no, it is towards the back. Yeah, in the anime, it's right on her shoulder because there's a scene where she turns her shoulder back and you can't really see her tattoo, and then it's revealed in the Arlong Park arc. And I was really confused because in the anime, her her tattoo is right on her shoulder, not on the back of her shoulder. Huh, and then she changed. Uh, so I, I, that's one thing that I noticed with her tattoo. And then she changes it to a tangerine and a, and a windmill to honor both her father and her mother. Yeah. There you go. I think that's it. Awesome. That's all I have right in here. Any uh, closing thoughts from you, uh, Agro? Yeah. Uh, good book. <laughs> uh, personally, I'm very much looking forward to... Uh, the next arc and learning more about the grand line. I, I'm very excited to see Agro's uh, reaction to certain things as we learn more about the grand line and what it entails um, and what that can mean for some of our characters. So yeah, I, I'm very excited. So. What words do we use for the larger arcs and then the little arcs is there are they both arcs so arc is like um you know like uh what we just logue town is an arc east blue Uh as a whole is a saga got it okay saga okay yep um so yeah cool how long is the next saga oh (laughs) uh it is 117 116 chapters that's not that much longer than this one. Yeah, no. It's not bad. Hey, the I current, think... uh, you know, arc is uh, 142 chapters, and it's arc? maybe ongoing. Arc. Arc. Yep. Arc. Yep. Arc. Arc. <laughs> arc. <laughs> I binged the, the, the Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean movies the other day, and uh, Barbosa and... Jo- and uh, Barbosa and Captain Sparrow are arguing. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's what just happened between in front of me between the bark. two of you. <laughs> bark, bark. I think what I'm most excited for is just reading the manga for the first time. I've been an anime only for for East Blue and the next saga, and basically until the time skip, I've been a anime watcher. So I'm like, and I was pleasantly surprised by how well he draws moments. He just does them so well. And even if you can't read the 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 uh, sound effects, like you you f- feel the moment, like you know what it is. It's mm-hmm. a dawn. It's always a dawn because I've read the I've well, I've listened to the anime soundtrack and I've watched the anime, so I know what that signifies. The, yeah. That, um, sound effect, but I can also hear it in my head every time it shows up. You know, everything's with a dawn. You know, and just it, it, the paneling is surprisingly really well. Like I, I don't feel like, except for Baratier, it doesn't feel clunky. It doesn't feel rushed. It feels exactly how it should have been. Even if you wanted to add more stuff at the end. So that's what I'm most excited for. Just like reading the manga for the first time as an anime only watcher for like. I've been an anime only watcher for 10 plus years, you know? <laughs> I've never read the manga up to this point, so I'm just really excited for that to see the differences. Yeah, I hear you. 
It's very uh, exciting. I am interested in uh, seeing where the, where where this goes. Meeting the other crew members. I'm sure that'll happen over the next 500 chapters or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the previously mentioned time skip, which I have known of for a while, did you just you know I I've vaguely seen post time skip designs. You've been <laughs> online. Characters. <laughs> yeah, I I know the internet. Yeah, turns out, turns out I have been on the internet over the, the last twenty five years. years. <laughs> yeah, uh, but um, I don't know when it is. I have no idea whatsoever. So that'll be interesting. Are we gonna do favorite characters before we uh, finish recording? We can do that. We Any updates? <laughs> <laughs> we can just you go rank the straw hats. I don't want to rank. I just want to say favorite character. Rank the straw hat, Saflam. Oh rank, 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 you rank. Now, 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 now. <laughs> I don't want to rank. I'm just going to say my favorite character is Zoro so far. That's it. I'm not ranking. Agro, <laughs> rank the straw hats. <laughs> rank the straw hats. Okay, number one, you got Nami. Number two, who cares? Nami's number one. But really, uh, it's Zoro. Number three, I guess Luffy. And number four, I guess Usopp. And I guess <laughs> Sanji's there too. But really Nami's the best. That's all we need to know. Uh you're almost right. You got Zoro, <laughs> Nami, Luffy, Usopp, Sanji. You were almost there. You were so close. Uh, oh no. You were almost you were Oh almost no. <laughs> this is a trick question, Ninegro. Don't fall for it. <laughs> okay, so we're not close. going to have a team ranking on this one. Hey, in the future, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> are you are you counting the Mary? Is that what it is? No, no. I ah. just mean at at some points in time, <laughs> I would rank Nami higher. Oh, okay. So you guys have the same I, ranking? Uh, other than Nami and oh. Zoro. Okay, okay. Swap them for se- first and second. Other than that, yes. The okay. bottom three are there. For now, I mean, I got. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, Hey, I wasn't giving Luffy a hard time. (laughs) He's just below the other two, Uh, and Usopp and Sanji. Okay, that's not fair. I like Usopp in the manga. Sanji is there. Has to be a static character. Okay, okay. His entire character is being a static character, so that's not bad. Everybody. Breathe. Luffy does get <laughs> no. better with time. Oh like, no! Hey, I, I love Luffy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm not. I'm not I'm hating on him. <laughs> I like some static characters. I think he's my favorite character in the latest arc. Oh yeah. For me, at least. Well, but there's too many. Luffy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but Luffy is. Uh... We'll, we'll talk about it when we get there. We <laughs> will. When we get there. Yeah. In when we years. get there. <laughs> When One yeah, Piece, so. the sequel, is coming out. <laughs> two we'll, Piece. We'll get there before. <laughs> wow, the Two Piece. <laughs> the One Piece was the... When the oh, One Piece oh. graduates from, you know, <laughs> and becomes a bikini, eventually, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> but, seriously... I think we're rambling. <laughs> I like... Uh, lead us out. I will lead us out, but in a second. I, I really like both of your opinions on the series. I like Inagro... Because he has fresh eyes, and he's just basically one-word answers, <laughs> which is the worst, but he is paying attention, We're still guys. early in. Yes, we are still early in. He is paying attention, and he's liking the world building, and he said Arlong Park was his favorite, so <laughs> as long as I can get somebody barely. him to admit that, barely. I'm good. He and almost said Baratia. Very close. Lucian, I like how you pay attention to the attack names and like the little details of like this like this arc with the great great swords and all the, the classifications of all the different swords. I really like how you pay attention to all the different attack names and the details that usually I miss or I overlook and all that stuff. Uh, it's really it's nice to balance off somebody who doesn't give one word answers. So, <laughs> yeah, no, job. I mean yeah. please, you pick up on a ton of allegories and stuff that I think both aggro and I miss out on, so I think it uh, it's a good balance, and I'm looking forward to see how uh, the podcast evolves over time, uh, mm-hmm. and <laughs> to see Agro expand in his answers <laughs> will be in very his fun. <laughs> yeah, much like Luffy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to Agro's character development. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll on see. that note, Maybe I think this is a good. 
<laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I think that's a good note to wrap up uh, yep. this week of We Just Want to Talk About One Piece. Uh, thank Under you very the Iron much. Black yeah. Yes. <laughs> and thank you very much to everyone for popping in and listening. Uh, and we will be back uh, soon with the uh, Reverse Mountain Arc and Whiskey Peak. See you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye.